Let's talk about virtualization. Now, as you know, the mainframe is full of some incredible hardware, but you can only get so excited about that if you're only driving this small little application that maybe doesn't need 196 processors and 40 terabytes of RAM. But then at the same time, you've got these other huge applications that support the entire business, and those need big time amounts of processors and memory. Well, it all works out because the mainframe is built around virtualization. There's the physical side of things, the stuff we can see, and then there's the logical side, which is how it actually gets used. Think about it like a house. You start out with this floor plan, and well, that's, that's only fun for so long. Eventually, you start wanting an area to sleep in that isn't the same area you make your breakfast in. So you say, let's start partitioning this up, and we'll make this area a bedroom and this area a kitchen. And then you say, well, you know what? Better make it two bedrooms, and we'll probably also need a bathroom, so let's carve out space for those as well. That leaves this area over here. I'm going to make this a living room, and you know what? As long as we're playing Dreamhouse, I've always wanted a study. So I'm going to put in a study right here between the living room and the bedroom. Oh, I can't wait to use that study. It's going to be so great. So there, I've taken my empty floor plan and I've partitioned it out to give that space use. Same concept on a mainframe. You start out with all these resources and then you say, you know what? I need a place to run my Linux web-facing API. So here they go. And I also need a place to test things. So let's say this is my test environment. And let's give a bigger version of that to production, because they'll definitely want that to run the whole business. Maybe these are where the databases go. You can see we've got a whole bunch of them for redundancy and performance. And then development happens over here. And these can all be running different operating systems, and we can bring one of these down without affecting all the others. It's like it's its own room. You don't do kitchen stuff in the bedroom, and you don't do test stuff in production. These are called LPARs, or logical partitions. So because we have LPARs, we can have this big amount of resources, which can be run a whole lot more efficiently and give us a whole lot more options than a whole bunch of smaller individual servers. But they can behave and appear to users as separate working environments. And you know what we forgot? Doors. Let's add some doors to this house. Obviously, we need to be able to get in and out of all the rooms. And now that we've added doors, we can peek our head out of the kitchen and see what's going on down the hallway. On a mainframe, these LPARs exist as separate, isolated systems, even though they're technically on the same hardware. And if you're logged in over here, you can't just peek out into any other LPAR. Just because I'm over here doing development, I can't affect this production area unless I specifically have access. Hey, you know what? We've got our own tiny little master of the mainframe LPAR over here, and we're letting thousands and thousands of mainframe noobs loose on it right now on the same hardware where other stuff is running. And it doesn't matter because we've got our own CPU, we've got our own memory, and it's the job of virtualization to make sure everybody gets what they need. A fully loaded Z15 mainframe can have up to 85 of these LPARs, and some companies will use them all up making smaller size systems, others will make up a couple very big LPARs, most will actually have a mix of small, medium, and large. And these aren't set in stone either. If an LPAR starts needing more processor power or it starts running out of memory, as long as there's more unused resources going around, or if we want to share resources between two LPARs, which is a thing we can do, the person in charge just needs to load up a web page, hit some buttons, and say, all right, you've got more power. And that right there is the true power of virtualization, being in full control of how you use what you have.